I was listening to a song the other day that said, if you don't evolve, you evaporate. Whether you agree with that statement or not, I think Adobe is trying to do the same with Photoshop by introducing some of the most incredibly crazy features to keep up with the crazier times of AI. In this video, let's take a look at all the new features and updates introduced in brand new Photoshop and Photoshop beta just a few days ago in Adobe Max London. So without any further ado, let's get started. The first feature is generate a fill with a reference. Let's say you want to replace this bag with something else. Now, of course, you can make a selection around it. Let me load the selection. You can click on generate a fill. You can type what you want. But what if you have an image in mind? What if you want to replace this bag with this one? Can we do it? Let us try. So let's click on generate a fill. And now a new button will show up right here. This is for the reference image. Let's click right here and let's choose a reference image. I'm going to choose this pink bag. Click on open and we have the reference image loaded. You can type whatever you want or leave it blank. I'm going to type in backpack and click on generate. Now, as you can see, the reference image is loaded right here. And there you go. I mean, it's not a perfect match, but it is a step in the right direction. Here's the first one. Here is the second one. Let's bring it right here. And here is the third one. They're not the exact matches of this one. The AI seems to just get the sense of the style. It's not a perfect copy of the design. As you can see, you had those cat ears. You had these little chains right here. But right here, you don't see any of them. But you do have the dots. Now, let's see what happens if we don't type in a prompt. Let's remove it and generate again. Not so much closer and it doesn't make a hell lot of a difference. Let's try a different bag. We're going to click on it again, replace the image, with the green bag this time. Click on open. And just to give you a reference, this is the bag. Let us click on generate. Know that this feature is right now only available in the beta version of Photoshop. Let's take a look at this one. This is pretty close up. Do you think so? Well, not so much. The design is different. First one, second one. I think the second one is a bit more closer. And then you have the third one. It does get a sense of the style and keep in mind, this is just the first iteration. Imagine what would happen in the next versions. Before we move on to the next feature, know that many of the features that we're going to talk about today are only available in the beta version of Photoshop. So I'm so sorry if you're using a Captain Jack Sparrow version of Photoshop, but if you're not, this is how to get the beta version. Go to apps in your Creative Cloud desktop app. Inside of that, at the top, click on beta. Inside of that, you have Photoshop beta and you can install it from here. Photoshop beta is a separate app and you can keep it alongside your main version of Photoshop. And I recommend that for main professional work, please use the regular version of Photoshop. You don't want your projects to crash. With this update in Photoshop beta, you're now using Firefly model three for generative AI text to image generations. Whereas in the regular version of Photoshop, it is still using model number one, first model. So when you open a blank new document, you now have a dedicated option to generate an image from scratch. If you're not seeing the contextual taskbar, go to window and you wanna make sure contextual taskbar is checked. Just click on a generate image. It opens a separate dialog box that is just like the Firefly website. Let us type in a dog reading a book in a library. Now you can choose to create art or photo. I'm going to choose a photo. You can have different effects to it. You can have different themes. You can have different materials. You can have bokeh, digital art, layered paper, watercolor, lots of effects right here. For now, let's keep it this way and click on generate. Let's compare it with the first model. Have a look at the details. Of course, the text is indecipherable, but this is pretty good. Here's the first one. Here's the second one. And here's the third one. I think I like this one. But what if we try to do the same thing in the regular version of Photoshop? So on the right, we have Photoshop beta with model three. And on the left, we have Photoshop regular version with model one. In here, you don't have a dedicated option for text to image. So we need to select all by pressing control or command A. And then in the contextual taskbar, we have to use generative fill. Type in the same thing and click on generate. Take a look at the results. Look at the difference. Here's the first one, the second one, and the third one. You can clearly tell the details between this one and this one, especially if you look at the first one. I mean, this is a night and day difference. Now let's try different styles here. Instead of this plane generation, let me click on this one to get back the options. And this time, why not create 
art in the techniques section let's go for watercolor and click on generate similarly on the left hand side there is no option to add those styles so i'm just going to type in comma watercolor and click on generate the left hand side looks like the first year art student drew it and the right hand side is from a final semester maybe graduated student so here's the first one for the left hand side model one second one and third one clearly looks like first year art student for the second one let's take a look at the first one second one and the third one really really better now we could change and generate backgrounds before with generator fill but it has become so much more easier and it just works whenever you open an image first of all in the contextual taskbar you'll see remove background option click on it it automatically removes the background and after that once the background is gone you will see this new button called generate background let's click on it and type this prompt this is a simple beach with ocean waves and mountains in the background let us generate it and there you go whatever it generates it absolutely matches with the subject from the lighting the perspective and colors here's the first one here is the second one and here is the third one oh my gosh i think the first one matches the best the next update is available even in the regular version of photoshop and that is the brand new font panel it is pretty darn good let me share that with you so in this case let's say you want to play with the fonts you don't quite like it so with that text layer selected you can open up the text too so if you click on this font drop down you will see a new panel now of course you can try the fonts that are already there in your system and they are categorized too like serif slab serif sans serif different ones but you can click on more fonts right here and that takes you to adobe fonts right inside of photoshop which means that you have access to thousands and i think more than 20000 fonts right inside of photoshop without even having to install all of them and they are pretty nicely categorized like handwritten sans serif script it takes time as it's loading from the web or you have different tags too let's go for something luxurious let's click on it and we want all classes and as we go through the fonts you're looking at a real-time preview without even having the fonts installed let's say you like this one fino sans let's click on it it will automatically be selected installed and everything happens in the background the next feature allows you to generate similar results that you like with generations it can be all over the place and let's say there's one particular thing that you like and you want to generate something similar to that here we have a blank document let's click on generate image and i'm just going to type in mock-up of luxury cream bottles let's go with that this is definitely a photo and simply generate now out of these three first one second one and third one let's say you like the third one but something is wrong right here you want to generate something similar to this here's what you do you click on the three dots right here and click on generate similar and now you have results that are similar to this one you see that all three are very similar to this one now this feature works with all kinds of generation whether it's generative fill generative expand whether you're generating backgrounds or simply text to image that we just did for example let's say you want to extend this photo select the crop tool by pressing c and let's expand it this much is fine click on generative expand and generate you can leave it blank or type something that's up to you and out of these three results let's say you like the second one and you want to generate something similar to that so you can click on the three dots and choose generate similar so now the next three generations are similar to that if you want to generate something similar to this one let's try it as well and now you have generations similar to that with them genes i think this is better and then you can generate something similar to that and that's how generate similar works the next feature can be very useful especially when the generation resolution is too low let's say you want to remove this guy right here no hard feelings maybe i'm a bit jealous anyway with this guy selected click on generate a fill and generate now the guy is gone for good but there's an issue whoa look at the second result that's funny third one is not so fine anyway let's go with the first one now here is an issue if we zoom in so this is the original image right here and this is the generation you can clearly tell where the generation starts even right here this is the original and this is the generation so you can enhance its quality by using this button right here let's click on it it enhances the detail and have a look it's much better it's not perfect but it's better here's the before 
and here is the after. So it does enhance the details a little bit, but it can also create unnecessary details too. Have a look right here, before, after, it creates that coarse texture on the skin, some unnecessary details right here, here's the before, here's the after. It is simply building up on the existing generation. If you really want true high quality generation, I highly recommend trying Piximperfect compositing panel. And this feature inside of the compositing panel is absolutely free. With one click of a button, it automatically generates all of the areas piece by piece so that the resolution always stays the highest. The last feature is the adjustment brush. It was already released before, but this time it is so much better and all of the complaints that I had before, most of them are now gone. So you know how adjustment layers work, right? For example, we can create a curves adjustment layer, we can make adjustments like this, and then we can go to the mask, turn it black, take a brush, and paint it with white on areas where we want it. This is how basically it works. Instead of doing all of these steps, you can now directly select the Adjustment Brush tool. And you can choose whatever adjustment you want from the Options bar at the top or the Contextual Taskbar right here. Let's go with the Curves Adjustment. And now you can directly paint wherever you want to make the adjustment. For example, I'm gonna paint right here, a little bit right there. And then here's your curve. You can reset the whole thing and adjust it to your liking just like so. When Adjustment Brush was first introduced, it didn't have many of these. It didn't have curves. Now it has most of it. I think all of it. Except of course fill layers like solid color, pattern and gradient. You have everything. You can easily add adjustments over adjustments. Just click on add new adjustment. Choose whatever you want. Let's click curves one more time. And this time let's reset it and bring the whole thing down like so. And we're gonna paint all around the corners. By the way, if the changes are not too much and you want to have a look at the preview of which areas you're painting, you can always turn on overlay to see which areas you have painted and turn it off when you don't need it. Now it gets even better. It doesn't have to be limited by a brush. Let's say you wanna create a curves adjustment layer. Let's select that. You can even click on select subject right here. By the way, this only shows up when you have the adjustment brush selected and automatically it has masked all the pots and brightened all of them. Now, of course, you can adjust them to your liking, make them darker, brighter, add any other adjustment layer, that's up to you. And from here, it gets even more better. Let's create a new adjustment, and this time, let's choose Hue Saturation. You wanna make sure the foreground color is white. And now, if you click on Select Object, you can click on any individual object, like this one. And now, you can change the saturation, the hue, and everything of just that object. So that, my friend, is all of the updates in Photoshop and Photoshop Beta. How do you feel about them? What are you going to do with it? Let's talk in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.